Hey everyone, Chris here from AV.technology and I'm here with Mark Kellum who is the uh, VP of R&D Global for Harman Professional. Thanks Mark, I knew if I tried to recite that I'd stuff it up so. <laughs> <laughs> uh, which is a real treat because we get to hear behind uh, the scenes brains of the, um, I guess the full Harman product roadmap where um, where we're going and how we got to uh, where we're at now in the last sort of flurry of Harman new product announcements yep. and, and rollouts. We've so, been busy. Um, yeah, <laughs> so I, I guess um, what's uh, stuff from the thousand foot view, Mark, like where, uh, what's the rationale behind the rollout that from your perspective as we've seen in the last uh, three years, I guess, would you say? Yeah, yeah. well, certainly our, our objective has been to refresh a lot of our key product categories. Um, most recently, you've seen us announce multiple major AMX mm. uh, products, you know, from control and uh, distributed video and, and, uh, and programming and so on, uh, all of that, including a new software suite that goes with that. Um, so really re reworking AMX from the bottom up in all of its key categories. That's been a multi-year investment for us mm -hmm. um, and, and candidly quite overdue, mm -hmm. but um, we're, we're, we're really excited to be showing it. The response has been, been very positive. So we've, we've done that around AMX. We've been very focused as well on uh, BSS, JBL, tremendous amount of JBL product coming. Uh, even over in our lighting business, the Martin Lighting sure. um, has been yep. a, a big investment for us. But there's so many like little screaming mouths to feed. It's hard to know which one. Yeah, to it's, the it's a challenge, and and really that's a that's a big part of us uh, of our challenge on leadership is to make sure that we're focused in exactly the right places that we focus our investment. Um, it is a sizable investment. We, we take that very seriously. We did not really tap the brakes at all during the COVID pandemic. Um, we continued to invest in new product and in, and in d development, um, but that there's a big responsibility that comes with that to make sure that we're, we're making that investment in the right place. So give us a, a look behind the scenes. What does uh, global harm and R&D look like from a personnel and, and sort of brains trust perspective? Sure, we have about 400 people globally. They're spread across six sites. Um, in Dallas, Texas, in Los Angeles is our acoustics focus. Uh, we have a team in Shenzhen uh, in China. We have a team in Budapest and a team in India. Did I get to six yet? Oh, in Denmark. Uh, our lighting business is in Denmark. So uh, a, a pretty good distribution across the globe. And Hardware um, versus software. It's a, it's a mix there. Um, our software is primarily focused in the US, in Dallas and in India in Bangalore, which I, maybe I didn't mention that in the first batch. Um, so we, that's the primary focus on software is those two locations. Um, acoustics, of course, is in mostly Northridge, but also Shenzhen. We have a, a pretty significant um, investment in facilities and people there in Shenzhen, um, especially around acoustics and electronics. So I, I'm, I guess I'm old enough uh, to remember that the harm and promise way back in yep. the 90s when they were highly acquisitive that yep. Um, there would be a shared kind of brains trust across those brands. Um, if I, if I'm buying a BSS product now, I surely we're in a world now where I know that I am not buying from a, obviously a boutique company in England. I'm buying right. a Harman product with a BSS badge that I guess enjoys the full breadth of the Harman brains behind it. Is that how you? Yeah, yeah, fun. very much. And I think, um, especially as these new products are launching, they're all based on the same technologies um, that have just been optimized for the different brands and the different markets. Um, but, but what you're seeing there is we only have to design and develop something one time, um, and then we can perfect it and distribute it across multiple products. Um, you know, that, that all sounds easy. Um, it's actually very challenging to do because you, you sort of are asking engineers to design three things at once, if you will, right? So it's very easy for them to get uh, overly perfectionistic and kind of get bound up in the complexity of it. Um, again, that's back to this focus aspect, both from the de product development side, but also the product roadmap side, sure. the product strategy side. You've got you've got to stay very laser focused on certain things, otherwise. Um, you can trip on the complexity of it very quickly. I guess that's uh, 
I'm guessing a big part of your role is yeah. that you've got that sympathy for the the inch wide, mile deep guy. Yeah. And you've got to have the mile wide, yeah. inch deep view as well. V very much so. And and I, the other thing I would say is, you know, my role sitting over all the different segments, whether it's audio or control or video or lighting or software, um, is I, I can see where the teams are um, struggling with the, with very similar problems. Mm. And so, you know, if you talk to my team, I'm always, I've always got a story, you know, I, let me tell you a story about what happened over here in this part of the business. Sure. Do you need to call this person? Yeah. You know, they, they just went through this problem. They just fixed it. They can help you yes. and trying to help make those connections, but also then also to put a little more structure and discipline around it. Mm. Um, so that our engineers are, are, designing robustly from the start um, instead of, you know, sometimes engineers get very interested in being done and moving on to the next shiny thing right. um, yep. and, and helping them focus on the discipline of really completing the, mm. the, the design is an important part of it. So when you're talking to your uh, engineers about, I guess, the, the global harm and vision, um, like if there is there um, a Harman ecosystem that you foresee or, or you're working towards or? Yeah, very much. Yep. I mean, um, all these AMX products that we've launched are based on core technologies that are also finding their way into other parts of the portfolio. Um, and and so, yeah, that's a, that's a big part of it is making sure that we're reusing the technology that makes sense to reuse. Um, and only developing the, 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 the bits that we really, really need. Um, but to, to do that in the right way, I mean, again, you could, you could get very idealistic about that or legalistic about it mm. and fail, right? Yeah. So we can't forget what makes each of our brands unique and special, even though we're trying to reuse technology across them. Yeah. It's, it's a big challenge. Yeah. How right? do you do that? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> is well, there an answer? I, I, think, I think the answer is, again, to to standardize only in the places that it really makes sense mm. from a technology and a business standpoint, mm. um, but but not to overly constrain either, mm. right? And that, that is a big part of my role is to make sure that we're, we're focused on design the stuff that we really need to, but mm. then reuse the, the, the things that, mm. we can, that we can reuse. Sure. And do you like, do you have everything you need as far as brands goes to have a full, complete Harman ecosystem for your customers? Yeah, we're very, um, I would say very fortunate there in terms of our stable of brands and, and you know, the history and the legacy. And, and I think the other thing I would say about that is, um, you know, the products, I always tell our engineers, the products are the beginning of the conversation. To, to them, it's like the entire, the entirety of why we exist. And, and, but my position is the products are the start of a conversation with our customers and our distribution partners. Mm. Having the right product gets you into the conversation. Sure. And now we start talking about all the other things that it requires to make a business and actually solve a, a customer's problems. Mm. Um, so the product has to be right. It has to be robust. It has to have the right price, you know, the mm. right quality, all of those things. Mm. And that enables then the rest of the conversation to take place, which is which is ultimately where you you know sell stuff and make money, right? Mm. Yeah, money. Yeah, selling stuff. I, I mean, I guess where I'm going is the technology exists to drive business. The yes. technology doesn't yeah. exist for its own sake. Yeah, of course. Right. Yeah, yeah. And that's a that's a challenge for some engineers. Yes. They they get very <laughs> interested in the perfection of it, or in you know solving. A problem in the most perfect way, mm. um, and we and we do. We actually took a lot of our senior leaders through, you know, financial training last year, right. and said, yep. "I want you to understand how the business makes money, yep. because ultimately that's how we all get paid, sure. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, we're not a university, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, so, uh, can you reveal a little bit about what's next for as far as a broader roadmap um, idea? Well, sure. I mean, we, we, we've already shown all of the, the AMX um, products uh, now that, that sort of completely and totally reboot AMX in all of its product categories. We have significant work happening in all the other categories, whether it's amplification, uh, audio processing, our lighting business is on, a, is on a tremendous roll right now. 
Um, we have it with multiple major releases in the last couple of years and, and more planned. Um, so, you know, it's actually a really exciting time. It's, it's, uh, it's very busy for us, mm -hmm. but, um, you know, we set high standards for ourselves to mm -hmm. be successful. And, and the thing that's great about it, and, and we're seeing it here this week is, um, you know, all the conversations have a very positive energy to them because we have new things to talk about and new technology mm -hmm. and, and we're able to go solve real problems in a more impactful way than we could with the previous generation. Right? Sure, and I guess just to touch on that, are the, um, I guess the, the lumps in the hose pipe starting to um, clear up when it comes to supply chain issues? Mostly, yes. It's, I mean, that, that's been really challenging for us. Um, if you think about this, just the width and depth of our product catalog across all the brands, the, the, the component shortages have been very, very painful for us, very challenging. I think we've, I don't know, we, we've redesigned over a thousand electronic components in the last couple yeah. of years. Um, and it's, and it continues. We, yeah. we have it, we're doing, we're, de we're right in the middle of something right now that impacts pretty much all of the audio products that we make. Yeah, right. um, so it's, it's a challenge. Um, it is improving significantly, but we're, it, it's, it's been unlike anything in my entire career, you know, mm. just the, the scale of, and, and also the kind of the short notice, mm. like you've been buying this part for 10 years mm. and it's gone, yeah. just gone, yeah. you know, and, yeah. and having to react to that has, has been a it's real It's not challenge. a good way of incentivizing engineers to get them to uh, redesign products they've already. Yeah. It's built. not so much fun. <laughs> right. Yeah. And uh, that's yeah. also true, right? Yeah. It's, yeah. it's, you're working on yeah. keeping something older alive instead of the new shiny thing. Um, so Soundcraft, just personal interest. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> when am I going to see new Soundcraft gear? We are, um, we've made some very good progress there. It's gone a lot slower than we intended. Um, you know, we actually made an announcement maybe 18 months ago that we were going to be staffing up our, our product development team, both engineers and product managers. Um, the, you know, the, the technical hiring was a real challenge, mm. especially last year. Okay. Um, and, and we really got almost nowhere with it. Yeah. We've made very significant progress in just the last six months on this topic. So, right. so we are moving forward. Realistically, it's probably 25, uh, before we see new product yeah. could be earlier, yeah. you know, but 25 is a safe bet. And I guess you've, because you got Studer, um, that can sit above it. Yeah. Um, uh, will you have different teams for the two? Brands. Yeah, I, I mean, definitely those are, they're, they're two different customer bases, right? So it's, uh, Studer to me has always been a little bit almost bespoke. You know, it, it's, it, because the customer is so demanding and at such a high performance level, they have just a very different expectation, mm. you know, than, than maybe the Soundcraft customer does mm. where it's, it's a more standardized product. Mm. Um, so yeah, sure. it, it is a, it is a different approach there. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, uh, Mark, thanks for your time today. And yep. uh, I guess you're here at Integrate uh, Expo um, and you're going to have lots of conversations. Like what's the, just finally, I guess, what's the payoff for you in your role? Like what, what gets you out of bed? You know, uh, for me in the, in the R&D role, it is, it's very important that I stay connected to the customers and to the customer base. Um, I, I don't feel good if I don't have a little bit of understanding about what's really happening in the marketplace. So, you know, at least once a quarter, I get myself out somewhere like this. I've just, I've been with our sales and, and, and leadership team all week, um, just, just listening to customers, listening to our distribution partners and just kind of observing and soaking in and analyzing um, so that I can make sure that our, our teams are focused on solving their problems. Yeah. Sure. And, and, the, and the thing in this business is that many times our customers can't explain their problem mm. or they, uh, they, they can tell it, it's this concept of, you know, observing what they're doing and what problems they're trying to solve as opposed to mm. focused only on the features, right? Yep. Um, yep. Because we may be able to come with a feature or a technology that they hadn't considered that improves their, you know, their ability to help their customers. Sure. Um, so it's anyway, it, yeah. it's real you important. So you're reading between the lines almost. They're yeah. like, you're, you're hearing what they're using it for. You might be hearing, hey, you should be doing X, Y, and Z. Why don't, why haven't you got this feature? But you're kind of reading between the lines and it's like, okay. Yeah. 
um, yeah, <laughs> I'm, exactly. seeing, I'm seeing a path forward. Yeah. Here, yeah. And, and that's, that's proven very powerful for us over the years, you know, and, and, and again, with the goal to focus our resources on solving someone's problem instead of technology for its own sake. Yeah, right? that's great. Um, um, and I said that was a final question, but like almost a one sentence uh, answer for this one, like over the past three or so years, we've seen a flood of new product, um, a lot of um, product that's solving problems and you know, round pegs for round holes. Um, I guess, where do you, as head of R&D, I guess, see Harman now? How would you score yourself out of 10 as far as, as a company? Um, excuse me. Um, how would you score yourself out of 10 as far as where you're, where you're at and where you want to be? You know, I would put us at a solid six and a half, right? You know, Room to improve. Um, yeah, I, I, we, we do hold ourselves to a very high standard, I think. Um, and there's a lot of underneath the surface stuff that's maybe not so obvious. I was just talking to one of our customers about a, a technical issue a customer had, and we fixed the problem and that was great. But, but it was also about, okay, how do the engineers now learn um, what happens so that they don't make the same mistake in the future, right? So we, we've, we've got some work to do still um, to really be world-class. Um, but we have the resources and the talent to do it. So it, you know, at this point now, it's, it's a matter of, of just turning the crank and, and helping that team continue to get better. Um, I'm in Denmark next week with our team there. We've got an outside expert coming in and we're going to, we're going to talk about problem solving for an entire week, you know, um, just to kind of help the team get that. Sure that outside perspective and tools and techniques. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. Just to keep, always get better. Get, keep, maintain momentum. Yep. Thanks, Mark. You it's bet. It's been a pleasure to talk to you. Thank and, you. Uh, yeah, have a great show. Yeah, thank right, you. Cheers. cheers.